It's time now for our spotlight story of the day. And for that, we go over to our anchor at large, Demi Akimuakaleli. Hello, Demi. Well, thank you so much, Vincent. The United States Supreme Court has made a major decision on gay marriage, marriages of same-sex couples. The justices ruled that legally married gay couples cannot be denied the benefits enjoyed by married heterosexual couples. VOA's Carolyn Pursuti explains what this means for gays in America. Jamie's the first one up, but it's Sean who walks Eli. You piece of bacon? Oh, yeah. Yes, you do. Well, Jamie and yeah. Sean are typical newlyweds. How's your breakfast? It's delicious, thank you. In a small apartment. Ah. But typical isn't how oh, some would describe them. They're a same-sex couple. They got married in a predominantly gay city in Massachusetts, so they wouldn't feel different. Every book I read as a kid, every movie I saw as a kid, had you know a man and a woman living happily ever after. And uh, to think that uh, by getting married and, and having the same rights as everybody else, um, that, that we can live happily ever after too, I, I felt like it was something we needed to honor. We needed to honor those, the 10-year-old kids. The Supreme Court on Wednesday affirmed that. The U.S. government had denied married couples like Jamie and Sean the same benefits as heterosexual married couples. The high court overruled that, saying the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, discriminated against gays who are legally married. Twelve states and the District of Columbia permit same-sex marriage. George Washington Associate Dean Alan Morrison. Married couples can now, whether same-sex or opposite-sex, file joint income tax returns. Uh, if you work for the federal government, both of you will be entitled to health insurance. The case was brought by a woman who had to pay inheritance taxes when her wife died. The bill was $360,000 more than she would have paid had her spouse been male. To the justices of the Supreme Court, thank you for affirming the principle of equal justice under the law. What do we want? It's an issue that divides the country. A recent survey shows just over half of Americans support same-sex marriage. Opponents spoke outside the court. The Supreme Court has no authority when it comes to the nature of marriage. That authority belongs to the creator. But for Jamie and Sean... It's incredible that the federal government sees us as no, not, you know, roommates that the federal government recognizes that what we did was real. And with it... Bye. Say bye. All the benefits and protections that go along with the high court's decision. I'll see you at six. Is that when you're off? Yeah. Okay. Thereabouts. Okay, bye. Carolyn Prasuti, VOA News, Washington. Well, to discuss the significance of the Supreme Court ruling and President Obama's call for respect for equal rights for all in Africa, we are joined in the studio by Duncan Breen, Senior Associate for Refugee Protection Program for Human Rights First, and on the phone from Kampala, Kasha Jacqueline Nabagesera, Founder and Executive Director of Freedom and Rome Uganda. And I want to thank you both for joining us today. Thanks so much. So let me start off with you, Kasha, You're out welcome. there in, um, in, in Kampala. You know, this message, you said you've been following the Supreme Court decision very closely. What does it really mean to you? And can you expect it to have any reflection at all for you in Uganda, which has really been brought to light, at least in terms of its anti-homosexuality stance? Uh, first of all, we are very delighted for the decision by the Supreme Court. It's giving us all hope around the world, and mostly in Africa, where um, we have about 38 countries that criminalize homosexual conduct. But also the mere fact that the president and the ruling, the president of America is on the soil, and I hope that um, many people are following his trend in Africa. But I also want to caution that um, even if it's the same sex marriage ruling, that the president should be very conscious not to promote sex, same sex marriage, because right now we are not uh, fighting for same sex marriage. We are right fighting for the recognition of our existence because there's a difference between these two. We cannot start fighting for marriage before we can actually be accepted. But so the ruling is giving that hope. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting point. You're saying that uh, President Obama should kind of put a stop on how far he pushes for Africa to embrace the rights of people who are of same-sex relationships. Just at least for now, just equality. Recognize that. Yes, for now that's the step where we are because we cannot start uh, demanding for marriage when we cannot. We are not actually 
recognize that same sex loving people. All right. Well, let me bring the conversation to you, Mr. Bream. Uh, as human rights first, this is an issue, obviously, that is um, of concern. If, in a nutshell, can you say it's good news? It's, it at least spells a way forward for people who are of same sex relationships. Completely. Um, and one of the ways for the United States to provide international leadership on human rights issues is really to set a good example by what it does at home. Um, and so as we've seen this administration you know, engage around the conversation around the LGBT rights internationally, um, as more progress is made at home, including on, on this particular issue, it, it lends more uh, credence to, to this mm -hmm. call for greater respect, uh, greater protection for LGBT people. Um, so that, that's certainly important. Now, one, sorry, go ahead. Just one of the things that, that's particularly important here in relation to this trip as well is that although there are some very different perspectives around issues around LGBT rights, um, one of the things that I think is that there could be consistent agreement on is really protection of everyone from violence. Um, and that's one of our principal mm -hmm. concerns, particularly in Africa as well. Targeted violence. Targeted violence, specifically targeting people because of their sexual orientation mm -hmm. or gender identity. Mm -hmm. And in my work with refugees, we see a number of people who are forced to flee their home countries mm -hmm. um, because of specific harassment, either through either um, by state actors or non-state actors. Mm -hmm. um, and so having to, to go into exile, essentially, just because of a, a critical part of their, their identity. Now, you're from South Africa, and this is an issue that you're following closely over there. What is the current status of this? Sure, and, it, and it's an important issue in South Africa where there are some good laws in place in terms of providing equality mm -hmm. you know, through the Constitution. Okay. But, but one I'm, I'm going to stop you. Unfortunately, we're having a problem with your mic. We can't hear you too well. But uh, coming back to you, Kasia, uh, President Obama made the statements in Senegal, which uh, has made homosexuality illegal. Now, President Macky Sall says the country is not homophobic, but gays must respect the choices of Senegalese, that is, not to put it up front. So what is your thought on uh, President Obama appealing for leaders to enable people of uh, gay orientation to practice their relationships openly? I think the president is, uh, is sending a very strong message, which uh, and he shows his leadership on this, because at first the people used to complain that uh, in America not all uh, same-sex marriages are illegal, and now it has shown that he has also actually done it on his home ground. And the, the fact that he's on the soil saying this, I, I believe that very many people are going to take a keen note uh, on what he's saying. And even what, uh, what the president of the Senegal said, if the majority of people cannot respect the minority of people, it does not mean that they have to discriminate against them. We all can, Africa is a big continent, we can all coexist. Okay. All we want is to be respected and let us to live in peace. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And I apologize, Mr. Breen, your mic, uh, somehow, I'm not sure what happened. But, uh, of course, joining us in the studio, Duncan Breen of Human Rights First and Kasha Nabagasera of Freedom and Rome Uganda, uh, who joined us from Kampala.